Hey everybody, here I am. It's me and Tishy. How oh, I thank you so much for your prayers. I mean, if you had seen her yesterday, you would not even believe it's the same cat. She couldn't stand up. She was falling over. She couldn't eat. And she spent her whole day in her kitty cave. Now, I'm not going to deny that she's almost 21 years old, which is pretty elderly for a cat. And she does have kidney disease. And um, for whatever it's worth, I know prayer works, and if that gave me even one more day with her or as many more days with her as I can get, I am so, so happy. So I thank you for your prayers, and I ask for continuing prayers. You know, she still has a way to go. We can't, uh, you know, we can't deny the fact that she does have this um, condition and everything but she ate a little bit today and she walked without falling over for those of you who didn't know I asked for prayers for Tish yesterday for uh, the fact that she was acting mighty poorly and um, and received them and my plan is to try to as long as I feel she is not in pain you know, I'm retired, uh, you know, officially retired. I do work for the campground, but that means my schedule is completely mine and uh, until the campers start coming in spring. But anyway, so I do have the luxury of being with my friend, my companion for all these many years. Uh, last night, she slept right up against me. And in all honesty, um, I was afraid, you know, I don't know if uh, some of you are moms, if you, uh, dads, I don't know if dads do it, but if you're a dad and you do it, put it in the comments so I know. But, um, you know, you go in the middle of the night and you put your hand on the baby's back to till they squirm a little, just so you know they're breathing and okay. I don't know. Maybe I was just, what's that word? They don't use that word very much anymore. It begins with an N. Um, oh, doggone it neurotic <laughs> so maybe i'm just neurotic i don't know but tishy is here today with me she's just looking good she had a little snack uh she's walking without falling over you know last night when i had to bring her to the litter box and she would fall over you know i thought my heart was gonna break so anyway uh let me just get back to saying thank you for your prayers please keep them up and know with me and, and hold the thought with me if there is any way she can leave on her own accord when her time is right. That's what I'm praying for, too. So thank you very much. And I, uh, I thank you for understanding that last night I simply was not up to doing this. And today I thought twice about it. So it may be rather short because I did not prepare very much because um, I was doing some work for the campground and taking care of Tishy and carrying her around and making sure she got whatever she needed, my precious girl. Oh, my precious girl. Okay, and thank you. Oh, all, everyone that said they love Tish and they, they uh, were praying, that just meant everything to me. Okay, let's go to today's National Day calendar. And I picked a few things from it. And the first one, it is National Freedom Day. And it celebrates the end of, of slavery. And that um, now it was done today. I forgot to write down the date, 1865. And it was not ratified until I think December uh, 1865. But I am so glad. Now, you know, there were a lot of holdouts that hung on to their slaves anyway. But if you read, if you read the um, Article 13 that was signed, it was very clear, you know, you don't own people. 
Now that dovetails, unfortunately, sadly, with news I heard this morning about uh, white, white supremacist uh, neo-Nazis in Orlando. You know, Orlando, Mickey Mouse land, uh, demonstrating on overpasses and in parks and uh, shouting about um, Jewish people. And uh, it, was, it was just um, saddening. And so we, um, let's pray as we pray with joy for freedom and the end of slavery. We pray for the enlightenment of those who darkly think that any one human being is better than any other human being. Just, oh, we got to get out of that dark energy. Uh, so it is also National Get Up Day and Worldwide National Figure Skating Day. Those go together because once you fall down, which most people fall down, you got to remember to get back up. I do have that ability. I don't skate anymore. No, no, not that ability. But a lot of times I am able to work out what's, in, what's bugging me and get back up, you know. What was that song? Uh, pick yourself up, brush yourself off. And start all over again. How many times did the slaves have to pick themselves back up? And on this day, I would recommend, I think you can find it on YouTube, uh, the series Roots. If you don't learn compassion from that, uh, you aren't paying attention. So, okay. And it is National Dark Chocolate Day. And I happen to have right here a dark chocolate I am going to enjoy. These are called, this, this is problematic. Let me tell you about it in a minute. But anyway, this is called Paws, and it's P-A-W-S, and it's made by William Sonoma. And at the bottom is a little, I don't know if you can tell, the light's shining so hard on it. It's a little paw print, okay? And it is uh, this this little dark chocolate thing with um, crunchies in it. And then the white chocolate on the bottom has peppermint in it. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes, 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 yes. I have to give me a bite. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. Hello? What good is dark chocolate without a sip of wine? So here's the conundrum. My friend Kim sends me these paws in this adorable tin. Remember, I'm trying to be a minimalist. And now I got this adorable tin. Let me show you. It's, it's good size. And I have to figure out, can I throw this out? This amazing gift? Can I just toss it? It's so great. It's a good box. Solid box. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm going to use it to make some cookies or something and to send it right back to her. Ain't that a hoot? I think so. So, <coughs> excuse me. So, um, I'll, I'll, let, I'll have to add on that. Today is February 1st. And um, we've talked before about, um, I guess it, we call it in February, the 28-day challenge. And that means for cluttering, clearing clutter and minimalizing, um, on the first day you give one thing away, on the second day you give two things away, all the way up till the 28th day. Wow, that's a lot of stuff, but I guarantee if you look around, you're going to find stuff to give away, right? And today we're talking about that lump under the rug. You got that lump under the rug? Did you ever trip over a lump under the rug? Yeah, a lot of us, a lot of us do. But if we look at it metaphorically and metaphysically, 
we get another whole kind of experience. So, the thing is, there's these stories about people who, you know, who are too lazy to, like, they might sweep up a pile of stuff and then they're too lazy to toss it or they can't find their dustpan or something or there's somebody knocking on the door and they just lift up the rug and sweep it under there. And uh, then the company comes and I sure hope they don't trip on the lump under the rug. But we also have mental and emotional and physical things in our being that are lumps under the rug. The lumps under the rug are the things we want to sweep away and that not address. We want to pretend they're not there. And if we could learn, just like not keeping, you know, not sweeping anything under the rug and then tripping over it later, you know, sometimes people would just, they didn't have a big pile, so they probably think, I don't even have enough to sweep up, so they just lift up the rug and underneath it. But that gets to be a habit, and then if after doing it as a habit for a while, next thing you know, you got a good size lump going on under your rug, right? So, we have to learn, number one, to clean it out. Number two, if it is our habit or our way of handling our life issues, to try to sweep it under the rug, try to pretend it's not there, um, we're going to trip. We're going to trip in any numbers of ways. Why do we sweep things under the rug? Could it be we're too lazy? A lot of times we don't do things because we're too lazy. I don't want to go find the dustpan so you sweep it up. Sometimes we have to deal with stuff like, let's put the stuff on top of the rug, clutter. Oh, it's so much, I don't even know where to start. You know where to start? Pick something up and throw it away or put it away. That's a big thing. There's a lot of stuff goes under our our, what is that word, um, uh, virtual rug, <laughs> a lot of stuff that goes under our virtual rug that not all, everything needs to be put away, some of it, not only everything needs to be thrown away, it, some of it needs to be put away. Our lives can change so much if we learn to keep them in order, to put things where they belong. Here's an example. If you have some issues at work and either you're, you don't like your job or you don't like someone at your job or your job's being hard on you or you're afraid you're going to get fired or laid off, you know, that's really, really uh, stressful. But if you bring it home and then you're bringing it and putting it on everyone else, you got to deal with it or you're going to take this thing and then it might not be the, the uh, lump under the rug. It may be the elephant in the living room. Everybody knows something wrong, but they can't figure out what it is. So whether it's a mental or an emotional issue, we just like the, the lump under the rug, we have to deal it with it. We have to look at it. You know, don't bring your stuff home to, to impose on your family or even your, your personal sense of peace. There's a story out there somewhere I used to use in my Sunday services, and it was about a man who was a new employee at the store. And he worked at this store, and it was a challenging store. They had all kinds of, you know, he worked in the complaint department, and there were complaints, and he thought he was going to pull his hair out. And he, he was so enamored of his boss who could just handle these things. And by the time it was over, the complaints were turned almost miraculously into compliments. And one day the boss said to him, Hey, would you like to come home and have dinner with me and my family? He said, Sure, wouldn't anybody? And the guy was so nice, he really did want to get to know him better and maybe learn how he kept a positive attitude. Well, when they got home, there was a little ficus tree 
a live tree outside in the yard. And before the man went in, he, he went like this. He touched all the leaves on the tree. And then he walked in. And he had a wonderful, the, the, the employee had a wonderful night at the boss's home, playing with his children, talking to his wife. It was, it was just wonderful. And just as he was leaving to go home, he stopped at the door and he said to the, to the man, um, I've had such a wonderful evening and you have such a positive attitude. And with the job that we have, that it's people are so angry all the time and everything, how do you stay that positive? And he said, do you remember when we came in and I touched the leaves on the ficus tree? And he said, yeah. And he goes, well, I was leaving all my issues there. I was leaving the crappy people there. I was leaving the angry people there. I was leaving the, the people who were trying to get a deal they didn't deserve, the complaints. I just left it there and I walked in my house. And overnight, spirit blows them away. Next day, I'm ready for work. When I come home, I leave all my stuff on the tree for spirit to blow away. Wouldn't it be great if we could do that? Do you have a tree outside of your door? You don't have a tree? Plant one. You have a bush? Put them there. Uh, if all else fails, you know, like put a little um, a statue or something outside the door that you can <laughs> rub your hands on and, and let go of all the issues that you had before you walked in. You want to make sure that um, instead of, of, you know, putting stuff under the rug, we have to learn to deal with it. It might be a financial issue. You might, you know, wonder why are you always bouncing checks or overdrawing your account or uh, why can't you get ahead? Well, that's, that's a, a financial lump under the rug. There's things we don't want to address, like having a regular process of handling our bills, of knowing what our responsibilities are. Now, here's where I want to... Uh, in, enlighten you. Uh, someday you're going to hear this again in a prosperity thing, but it's good for you to hear today. Um, it's about, in a way, it's about prosperity. Um, what? When we uh, are ready to work with our money, sometimes we would say, I've got to do a budget. Now, most people hear the word budget and that's as bad as saying diet. You know, it's like, no, no, I don't want to put on a camel hair robe and tie a rope around it so I'm hurting all the time. No, actually, the word budget, you know, means little purse. So you're affirming you got a little purse. I got that, by the way, from Reverend Letty Hammond from Unity Church of Clearwater. What if you said, what if you didn't? call it a budget what if you called it a prosperity plan that you would figure out how to pay your bills and have money as well it can be done there are so many little things to be bugging us under the rug that we may think it's all too much but I would like to invite you to uh, think about the things. Uh, one of the ways you know you've got something under the rug is if you find yourself saying, why does this keep happening? It keeps happening because you got stuff under your metaphorical rug that you're not addressing. But we address it not metaphorically, but metaphysically. We look at the issues in our life and we see, say, what is the cause? What is behind this that is affecting this pile under the rug? And then, if you change the cause, you'll change the effect. Are some of the things you've got swept under the rug secrets? 
Secrets you're trying not to tell that someone else told you or secrets you feel you're holding about yourself. So many people have low self-esteem because they believe lies that they hear about them being less than perfect, never good enough, never rich enough, thin enough, fat enough, pretty enough, none of that. So there's no, if you're holding secrets about how you feel about yourself, you need to deal with them. You have to remember you are a beautiful and beloved child of an, a wealthy father who showers you with every good thing. Do you remember the movie Help, The Help, where uh, Maybelline, Maybelline, Maybelline goes to this, is that her name? Maybelline? Uh, that's not her name, is it? Whatever, it's close. But she goes to the little girl and says, You is beautiful. You is smart. You is important. Maybe we need to say that to ourselves a little bit and diminish the false secret that we are not good enough. If you, if a, a lump under your rug is resentment or something you're, you're not taking care of in your relationships, everybody can trip over it. Anything that you're hiding under the rug because it's not being who you are can be something to trip over. I just I was thinking, I was watching Joyce Meyer today. She's talking about relationships. And she talked about the issues people have about themselves causing issues with their relationships, which is absolutely true. So you've got to address, instead of saying, if so-and-so would do this and this and this, that bugs me, we could have a better relationship. Instead, maybe it's, if I learned not to focus on this and this and this that I don't like, and focus on this and this and this that I do like, you know what, I guarantee your relationships would improve. Well, if you don't get that stuff out from under your rug, it's going to get bigger and bigger and harder to deal with. I, uh, I enjoy and hold to the theory of reincarnation, which is to me makes perfect sense. And if you don't deal with it in this life, you're coming back to deal with it in another. Hmm. That'll make you want to take care of it. What about taking care of the planet? You don't help clean up this planet. You're going to come back to whatever you did. I know. I'm doing my part. Yes, I am. Okay. Well, I think that's about it for today. And again, thank you for your prayers for Tishy. Um, and I pray knowing that uh, we've got time to be together and that no matter what, long as she's not in pain, whatever I have to do to let her know she's loved and treasured and I have told her, when you feel it's time to go, you can go. I'm not saying stay, stay, stay. But I am saying, I love you being with me, but when it's time, feel free to go. Right? Is that right? She said that's right. Okay, my friends, God bless and be good, and I'll talk to you next time.